Hey everybody, it's Nick Gemarino, Nick G from GlobalCurrencyReset.net. Today is September 10th, 2014. It's a Wednesday. It's the day before 9-11. And, you know, we don't have to discuss what's going to happen tomorrow. It's probably going to be a false flag or maybe they've got something set up with uh, ISIS. I know because Obama just gave this uh, speech about how ISIS is going to be defeated. T- reminds me a lot about uh, a lot of uh, what happened with George Bush when he was like, you're either with us or we're with the terrorists. Well, <laughs> Yeah, our president is up there just telling us, you know, what we're going to be doing, what we're going to be doing, going to war with uh, ISIS. Now, of course, the American people are not behind him. You know, for the most part, we what do we know? We know that that ISIS isn't a direct threat. I mean, the people listening to this podcast know, people listening to these videos know that ISIS poses absolutely no threat to the United States. However, you know, expect that there's going to be probably some bombing, uh, something maybe in Michigan, Chicago. They'll they'll try to do it in one of those, you know, really tight crowded cities they may try to you know either blow up a bus a school a hospital something that's going to get the people stirred up you know uh if you remember the oklahoma city bombings it they were focused on the children right and if you remember in, in the first gulf war the, this girl gave this speech and she was talking about how the babies were left on the incubators and they were left to die and uh the whole 30 years old the whole thing was fake so well, I was there. I saw the Iraqi soldiers g- come into the hospital with guns. Yeah, this is all fake, by they the way. They took the babies out of the incubators. Now, remember, this was all a lie to get us into the first Gulf took War. Took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was all fake, so that got us in the first Gulf War. Uh, the second Gulf War, I think you guys know what, what got us into that, right? The second... I hate these pop-ups. The second Gulf War was started supposedly because of 9-11. Supposedly. Uh, but we didn't go after Iraq, and you know, we actually went into Afghanistan. And I just want to show you guys something, real quick. And this is um, this is just from. Well, I don't even know why I'm typing Google. You can just search this yourself. I want you guys to type in Afghanistan, opium production. Okay, so. Afghanistan opium production, and I just want to look at a chart. You guys can do this yourself, but I like to show you because then you can prove that I'm telling you the truth. Remember, I spent four years in the Navy, had a top secret clearance. I kind of know what's going on. So here we are right here. I want you guys to notice something here. So this was talking about the opium that was produced. Now, if you notice what the Taliban were actually doing, the Taliban did a good thing. They actually banned the growing of poppy right around here. And then if you look around 2001, it was an all-time low for opium production. And of course, 9-11 happened, and then what happened? Opium production went up. So opium production is actually up. And the whole point we went over there is supposed to be, what, the war on drugs? And most of you guys already know that the soldiers are actually protecting the opium fields, not destroying them. And you're probably thinking, well, why? Why? Well, there's a lot of money in heroin, a lot of money in opium. So why would they destroy those good crops, you know, to get people addicted? They need people addicted, right? That's the whole point of it is. Okay. So, okay, so let's go ahead and continue. So, we had this search open for Afghanistan opium, right? Okay, we were originally on this page, the web page, where I told you guys you could just, you know, just, just type in opium production and then hit images. And this is what we got. Afghanistan opium production, here's the images. Okay, so you guys look at that yourself. You prove that I'm telling you the truth, Okay. Uh, and we'll lead into the reset because I know you guys want to know what does this have to do with the reset. It has everything to do with it. Okay, so let's keep going into this. So we're gonna we have typed now in Google Afghanistan opium. Now I'm gonna click news. Okay, we have 513 results that have the words Afghanistan and opium. For instance, look at right here, uh, Afghanistan opium. Now we're gonna go into something advanced that most people aren't used to using. Remember, Google's just an NSC database, so. We're going to go into time and custom range. Now, watch this real quick. We're going to type 2001 to 2000, 2001. I was probably off mic for a second. Sorry about that. Okay, so we just have one news report. Look at the date, May 20th, 2001. This is right before 9-11. Guys, I don't know anybody who's showing you this stuff, by the way. So let's go ahead and click on to this real quick. So we have a New York Times article from 2001. You can see the date right here, 0520. That's May 20th, 2001. Uh, there's the, a repeat of the date right there. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just look at what they're saying and listen to this. First American narcotic experts to go to Afghanistan, other Taliban rule. Let me zoom in on that because I know you guys can't see it. 
Okay, first American narcotics experts to go to Afghanistan under Taliban rule have concluded that the movement's ban on opium poppy cultivation appears to have wiped out the world's largest crop in less than a year. Okay, now they're talking about, oh, oh no, what about the farmers? It's bad for the farmers. What are they going to do to make money? Well, maybe they should grow something else. You, you can grow things other than opium. You can grow food. If you can grow opium, you can grow other stuff. Um, so people are just talking about different things that happened there. And blah, 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 blah. Uh, Islamic prohibitions against drugs. So, yeah. So actually, guys, the Taliban did a good thing. And it also talks right here about the end of opium production. Okay, so why did we go into Afghanistan? There you go, right there. Okay, ask somebody who has been in the military; they'll tell you the same thing, or they're not informed if they don't if they don't believe this. Okay, so that is the main reason why we went back into Afghanistan. Now, regarding ISIS, who I do not deem a threat because there's no credible evidence that they are operating in this country, other than probably you know there's a bunch of uh, I'm sure cells down there in Dearborn, Michigan, but even then. Uh, there's no proof. There's no proof of this. You know, they can come up with all the things in the world to try to catch people. You know, you can get molested at the airport if you'd like. Go right ahead. Uh, they are not, they haven't stopped one terrorist. Uh, TSA has not stopped one terrorist. And you can call them up on the phone and, and ask them, say, uh, oh, I'm just curious, you know, you go through a lot of bags, you go through a lot of pants, underwear, you know, everything. How many terrorists have you actually stopped? Absolutely none. Absolutely none. So what's next? Well, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking there's going to be a false flag. So that's where I'm at, guys. There's going to be some reason why they try to pull us back into Iraq, uh, maybe Syria. There might be another uh, false flag, you know, regarding Syria. You guys remember on some of my earlier podcasts and messages, I was speaking about how Obama was blaming the Syrian president for the chemical weapons attacks. You remember those chemical weapons attacks that happened in Syria? All right, so here's uh, on InfoWars, just something I was checking out. This was posted today, September 10th, and was a talk about media rehashes Syrian chemical attack narrative as Obama eyes airstrikes. Now, remember, a few months back, uh, Obama was trying to, trying to push all this. We need to go into Syria. We need to stop Assad with all the chemical weapons. Well, here's the whole thing about that. Assad never had the chemical weapons. He didn't. The, the chemical weapons were in the hands of the rebels. And the whole point is they just wanted to go into Syria because they have a lot of natural resources. Anybody following the global reset knows that, you know, when the currencies reset, they're going to be based on assets. The, the people are not going to want to stick with the fiat currency. They don't want monopoly money floating around. They want to have something tangible. They want to know that people actually have gold, silver, diamonds, uh, oil, something to back their currency, natural gas, something. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go into this real quick. Here's a quick video uh, that kind of goes into that false flag I was telling you about. I'm just going to show a quick snippet of it. It's only a minute long, but we're not even going to show that much. So what a mess. And to make matters worse, Al-Qaeda mercenaries in Syria, or should I say Al-Qaeda mercenaries, well, they've been caught with sarin gas. This according to Turkish Turkish officials, this is... Con okay, there we go. So, Turkish officials, there is concrete evidence that CIA's mercenaries operating in Syria under the leadership of the Al-Nusra Front, a terrorist group aligned with Al-Qaeda. Okay, again, CIA, Al-Qaeda, it's like you can't really separate the two, <laughs> are in possession of a deadly sarin gas or plan to use it against the Syrian army. Again, it, it does not say the rebels, not use it against the rebels. The rebels were the ones using it, okay? So you just guys just have to pay attention to all these different uh, key terms that they use. So that should be, you know, plain obvious to a lot of people that the point is, you know, we destabilize the country, then we show up and say, hey, we can help you out. It's just, it's just the oldest trick in the book. It's like the guy who, I think he was caught in New York for breaking windshields and then posting notes up saying, hey, you want your windshield fixed? It's the exact same thing. You know, it's like you burn your neighbor's house down and then you say, hey, uh, would you like to, uh, would you like fire insurance? It's like, come on, come on for your next house. It's, it's like, yeah, we can protect you. We can protect you from the next, you know, the next fire. It's like the, the person involved is the person who's trying to help. Okay. So don't, don't listen to any of this stuff happening. 
ISIS will be defeated. Listen, ISIS, again, poses no threat. You know, we have bigger problems in our country. The borders are wide open. Uh, people are losing their jobs. Wages are going down. Food prices are going up. And we don't have a threat from ISIS. Okay, so I just want to make that abundantly clear. You know, tomorrow is going to be the 13th anniversary of 9-11. I was in the service when that happened, and we all knew what was going on. We all knew for a fact that those buildings were blown up. There's no way that those buildings fell like that. Those, those was, that was a perfect implosion, as you would see if a building was deliberately brought down. That was not something that was done immediately overnight. That takes a lot of planning. That takes weeks of planning. And in fact, they were actually doing drills right before 9-11. So if anybody wants to get into a debate about 9-11, fine. You know, I mean, we're not really supposed to be focusing on that. I'm just saying this. Okay, you know, people are focused on the reset. They're focused on Iraq. If we start going to war with ISIS, if we start going there, to, you know, to deal with Iraq, don't do not expect any kind of dinar revaluations. I got a lot of people asking me, when is dinar going to revalue? What do I think it's going to be? There's not going to be a revaluation in 2014. You can write that down. You can post it on all the sites. Go ahead. And you, if you want to continue to listen to those two hour dinar calls, go right ahead. I stopped listening to those back in February for a reason. It just is a waste of time. Okay. You know, you can check the news just like I do every day. You know, you can go to the IMF's website. You can read exactly what Christine Lagarde is saying. You know, it, you do not need to just focus on one aspect of it, like one part of the, you not, there's a lot of guys just doing these dinar calls. As you can see, I don't post updates, you know, every week. I don't. Okay. I kind of wait. I spread things out quite a bit. Okay. So that's it on the uh, ISIS and false flag front. So if you guys have any questions, just go ahead and ask me, reply. Um, on the website, I made it really easy to subscribe. Just click this button. Boom, you're there, okay? No no other stupid forms. And in fact, if you subscribe, you actually get the free PDF. Um, see, PDF will be mailed after. And you're probably wondering, well, what PDF? The PDF for the Big Reset book, okay? So if you click here, that's the, that's the Big Reset book. Yeah, so I'll have a PDF for you if you subscribe. Um, so I highly suggest you guys do that. Also, for the collapse video, if you click this, there's a there's a video that goes over the collapse and what you guys need to know about it. And you can purchase it through these links here. Um, I purchased this one here because you get the physical product and the book because it's good to have the book to read, but also uh, it's nice to have the eBooks because you can share them with people. So, uh, I mean, it's really cool. And it, and if you want to skip this video, what you do is you, cl you try to close this page and yeah, you don't have to even worry about it. Boom, there you are now check this out. I'm still loaded right now. Okay. So this is all the stuff that you get when you sign up for the whole package. You get all these books. So you get 17 food items, a uh, basic guide to plants, basic guide to shelters, bartering skills. And, and these are not like, these are not small books at all. These are big books. This is a 109 page book right here. It goes over everything, you know, pay off your home, pay off your debt, survival skills, you can click it and it brings you right to that page. So I'm probably going to have to just post some previews for this for people because, you know, it's not the whole pur purpose of this video. But yeah, I just want to let you guys know that you can get all of these. And it's pretty long, actually. If you copy these and put them into, uh, let me see, I have a Adobe PDF. I could probably make a PDF out of all of them. Let's see. Because I'm kind of curious myself how big this is. So if we drag and drop all of these into Adobe like that, and I combine the files. I've got a supercomputer, so don't worry, this won't take long at all. Yeah, my computer's fast. You can see I've got all these processors. Okay. It's 365 pages. See? That is pretty big. And it goes over everything, what food items to have, you know, in a crisis. I don't want to get into it because, you know, that's copyrighted, but, you know, just want to let you guys know how much stuff you get. Okay, that's it. So, again, you know, if anything happens tomorrow, 9-11, 2014 it's a false flag it's not going to be isis i know obama just gave this speech this is just like what happened in 2001 with bush you know saying you know we we have to keep an eye on bin laden and that got us into the war there it's just like what happened in 1990 with the with the kuwaiti girl saying uh you know they left the babies on the on the floor and they died that was a lie that got us into the first gulf war and it's just like what happened in 2003 when Bush was saying that Iraq has weapons of mass destruction, that got us into the Gulf War a second time. So 
False flag, false flag, false flag. Okay, that's all I got to say. And yep, you can you feel free to debate me on this, guys. But I do not see the the dinar revaluing in 2014. If it happens in 2015, it's going to be really late in 2015. I'm saying like around September-ish. Okay, and it may not even happen at that time. I'm just saying, do not expect anything this year. What you guys should probably do is just save your money up, get some gold and silver. You know, I put some links up here if you want to pick it up. You don't have to buy it for me. Okay, I'm saying that to you right now. I don't care if you buy it, the dinar from here. I don't care if you buy the gold from here. This is just to help you guys out. This is a guide. So if you want to go to your local store and buy gold and silver, go right ahead. You know, this just shows you what I recommend buying. And here's the other thing. Uh, when the reset actually does happen, these prices are not going to change right away. And that's another thing I left this up here for. When prices go up, usually they go up on all the other currency sites immediately. But they are not going to go up on Amazon because they're not automatically structured to go up. So, like, let's say silver jumped up, you know, 10 bucks in one day. These prices will not jump up 10 bucks, okay? So I'm letting you guys know that this is, this is probably going to be a good resource to buy from. And again, you don't have to buy it from the site. You can just go directly to Amazon. But this is, these are just direct links that will be updated if they're sold out just to show you guys, you know, where, where you can buy silver. But this is an Amazon.com page. You can see right up here, it says Amazon.com and it says Global Currency Reset. It's just a little Amazon page set up. But, you know, I don't make, I, I make like a dollar if you buy like a coin, guys. I really don't make anything. I could even send you, you know, a test, of, uh, what do you call it, like a proof of income. I really don't make any money off of this, okay? This is really just to help you guys out. You know, if I was relying on this, I'd be sending you guys here every day saying, hey, buy gold and silver from me. But I don't do that because I'm not like that. Um, for those of you that did take advantage of the book and you did buy the uh, the collapse book here, thank you and congratulations. You have a really great resources, uh, really great resources to help you out when this collapse actually does happen. Maybe you guys will learn some skills, learn how to barter, learn how to trade, uh, learn something that's going to help you out. Okay, this, these books are really awesome. And like I said, if you do decide to get it, I do suggest getting the physical products. So you have something you can take with you on a trip. Besides, if electricity goes down, you're not going to do very well if you don't have something to uh, to guide you. And that you'll have a physical book. It, you know, I haven't gotten mine yet. I've already ordered it. Uh, it's been like 10 days. So I'm still waiting on mine to come in. But um, yeah, you pay like six bucks, you get it. See, I don't know why they structured it this way. It's like you get the physical product for the same price as you get the physical product in the ebook. So the site is screwed up, so you can get a really good deal right now. But the, the link is right here. Just these are these are... You can see I got rid of the menu because I just thought it was really annoying people and I haven't had a chance to update the site yet. So the menu is gone. There's no menu up there anymore. This is all you guys really need to know. The newsletter, breaking news, uh, a link to the, uh, the, the book I was just telling you about, and then this is the Amazon page. And this is uh, what I call the, the sitemap link. And this will take you to basically the entire site for anybody who has trouble figuring out where stuff is. This is everything. These are all the posts I've had. And then these are all the different pages. You know, what's the global reset? Uh, dinar revaluation, dinar options, uh, stage three alpha, you know, Iraqi dinar revaluation, everything. Dave Schmidt, uh, Nezra, dinar daddy. So just about everything is on here, guys. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Um, I'm trying to make this stuff interesting, but I know it's really boring for a lot of people because you're like, oh, we don't want to hear about collapse. We don't want to hear about false flags. We want to hear about the reset. I understand that, guys. I do, okay? And I'm sorry if, if this wasn't what you were expecting, but I have to be honest, you know, even though we're mainly focused on the reset, we do have to know geopolitics. We do have to know what our governments are doing. We have to be aware of if we are being pulled into another war, an unjustifiable war, and, and if Obama it really is deciding to go into Iraq again, I'm telling you guys, this is not going to work out for us. It's really going to be bad. This, it's gonna, It'll be like another Vietnam and we're going to lose a lot of more soldiers, a lot more soldiers, okay? So I'm just warning you, just keep an eye out for the news. And if there is an attack on the United States, be sure you guys have your TiVos set. Make sure you record everything because trust me, they will change up the news again. They'll do like they did on 9-11 where you had all those people saying that there were bombs in the building. And then the following news day, nobody mentioned bombs. Now, I don't think you guys remember that. I was in the Navy when this happened. We all kept hearing all the reports from New York. The guys, were all the pedestrians, people being interviewed on the street were saying there were bombs in the building and what happened. You didn't hear about that the next day. They never replayed that, but you can still find the clips on YouTube. So please, everybody, I beg of you, 
If we do have a false flag tomorrow, if something happens, make sure you record as many news stations as you can. If you have your TiVo set up to record, I don't know, Family Guy or Star Trek, stop it and make sure you're just recording the news stations because they are going to they are going to change their story. There's going to be a strict narrative that all the stations will stick to, but it's going to change. Okay? Someone's going to slip up. Somebody is going to mention false flag. I don't know. It's going to happen and they're going to have to change their news story, okay? Just I'm warning you guys, just be vigilant, okay? Do not believe anything that you hear on CNN either, okay? All right. Thanks again, guys. Good luck, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the GlobalCurrencyReset.net podcast. Visit GlobalCurrencyReset.net today for more breaking news. And don't forget to sign up for the free newsletter delivered right to your inbox. 